and chennai based sales professional working in a multinational company for example said she did weekly check ins with her boss because he constantly asks her to adjust her camera because he can see only her face she also says he always insists on a full body visual making me feel as if my body is on display i feel intensely uncomfortable do you think this is sexual harassment she asked me let us talk more about this virtual sexual harassment in our working environment at homes and find ways to deal with it another chennai based corporate training professional says the new workplace has led to blurring of personal and professional formal and informal lives earlier in the office the physical spaces lent formality to work she says now with the transition to the intimate home spaces an informal environment has set in with computer cameras on bosses colleagues and customers are being brought into intimacy of homes after hours and late night calls that interrupt family time are becoming common timetables for work and family time have become porous many remain unsure about what counts as sexual harassment when it's virtual or whether they can raise it to their human resources department as a consultant and an external member on sexual harassment committees i have heard from many women who are experiencing a new kind of harassment covid-19 has changed everything including work routines for many cubicles meeting rooms coffee stations never ending conferences and after our drinks are gone replaced by home computer screens for some women who routinely endure propositions lewd looks language at work even groping and physical intimidation social distancing has brought a reprieve but is sexual harassment now behind us not entirely new or subtle forms of sexual harassment seem to be on the rise employees now find and find themselves under the constant gaze of the camera be it zoom webex google meet or skype gathering data on sexual harassment since the covid-19 lockdown began is a challenge because many continue to suffer in silence a survey released in march by the network of women in media and gender at work found that over 1/3 of its 456 respondents from the media industry has experienced some form of sexual harassment at their workplace and over half of them did not report the incident women usually hesitate to come forward because they doubt they will be believed or have their complaints taken seriously the problem is always one proving your case now with the covid pandemic and the rising fears of layoffs for loss pay cuts coming forward carry additional risk some of the power to punish may believe they can harass and bully with impunity the law under the prevention of sexual harassment act 2013 should provide protection it clearly defines sexual harassment as inappropriate physical as well as gestural and verbal behavior companies that fail to take steps to enforce it can face punishment but the infrastructure needed for the sensitivity and respectful workplace is still a work in progress unfortunately now that so many are working from home it will be important to stay ahead of the curve and see that the law shields such workers as well the good news is that law's definition of the workplace is a broad enough definition to cover work from home it includes any place visited by an employee arising out of or during the course of employment including transportation provided by the employer for undertaking such a journey home fits in as a new working place under section 2o of posh act the law even facilitates online investigation and provides for virtual handling of cases but all this new is territory for companies in india a starting point would be for companies to redraft their sexual harassment policies and clearly use the term work from home as indicative of formal workplace companies should spell out do's and don'ts like what can be shared on social media decorum for online meetings language dress code camera use and what constitutes a work day they need to explain what a hostile working environment means now that work has shifted to home they need to show employees way to draw the line between work and private life and establish their own liability as employers if they cross the line sensitization workshops largely abandoned during lockdown should start again this would help people navigate this uncharted territory the sooner organizations pick up from where they had left and reinforce new terms of engagement the better it would be for all covid-19 is still spreading and remote working is unlikely to taper off anytime soon nor will sexual harassment fade away on its own we need clear messaging from the top management and a commitment to zero tolerance of sexual harassment 
anywhere. Sensitization is important. Sexual harassment often takes place in a matrix of power. In the current situation, when everyone is firefighting and working 24 7, often after normal working hours, it is important to keep the aforementioned messages in the forefront. Proper training and sensitization are important. Managers must be sensitized to observe not camera ready behavior. They must not insist that female colleagues log on to one on one video calls but have the option to take calls only audio only mode. Employees must not assume that because they are working late hours, they can send chat messages to colleagues at those hours. Mandatory post training should include not just topics like dressing appropriately and keeping the conversation limited to work but should also ensure that employees fully understand what is appropriate and what is not in the context of a video call. While it is critical that companies conduct training and awareness sessions for employees, they must not forget an important constituency, newly recruited staff and interns who are now getting onboarded visually and who may need to be sensitized to expected standards of professional behavior. Webinars, short videos and infographics that explain and provide examples of the possible missteps are good foundation for educating and sensitizing employees. This also cut both the ways. Clear messages of the ramifications of false and malicious complaints also need calling out. Retrace mechanism. Lately, companies should remember to maintain a functioning complaints and retrace mechanism. For instance, they should consider how the internal complaints committee can conduct virtual meetings so that the employees can be assured of swift action if they complain of harassment. Patriarchy and gender stereotypes are so steeped in our culture that we cannot afford to assume everyone understands all nuances of professional and unprofessional conduct. The Posh Act has long been seen as a sound proactive tool to safeguard a woman's right to dignity and work and to guiding young professionals who are often lost in the transition from college to workplace. As we undergo a dramatic shift in workplace dynamics, companies should be proactive in acknowledging that the workplace has transformed in ways they did not contemplate even six months ago and should constantly refresh their frameworks for workplace safety. Thank you for watching this video. Hope it was informative. If so, please do share with your friends and families who might need it the most. And if you have any suggestions or feedback, please do post them in the comment section. And to watch all such informative videos from us, please do subscribe to us.